I just want to move to the final part of the paper now, the third part. And I've, I hope I've already started raising some implications for nursing from our current limited understandings of person and personhood. And I want to continue part three by adding to the argument or cementing the argument for more attention to the four existentials, including embodiment, as being core to nursing and caring frameworks. And for me, this does mean bringing embodiment to the fore, on the foreground, and considering how we as nurses work with this notion of an embodied person in our, in our practices. I believe that we probably do in, in, in implicit ways, but I think we need to be much more um, intentional ourselves and much more open about this. And I think at the same time, of course, this will force us to challenge ourselves um, and challenge the assumed dualistic perspective that is inher inherent in many of our frameworks in practice and that disadvantages so many people that we work with when they're ageing, um, vulnerable, sick, ill, unwell and, and dying. From, um, a, a related example, for example, is with, with education and I think looking at the four existentials, looking at particularly looking at embodiment, challenges us to look at more creative ways of learning and of ultimately uh, looking at how we construct and deliver the curriculum uh, in education and practice settings. I just want to move um, on slightly now and look at the things that we can learn from particularly holistic or person-centred therapy. Um, we can be informed from this practice that the experiential essence of the person, what some people might refer to as the true self, is nurtured um, in context where the person is valued, attended to with respect, and where there's a discourse that values sentiments, and where there is a connectedness between persons. And uh, Todry, in his, his 2007 book, talks about this in a very interesting way. And more recently, McCormack and McCants and Dewing have uh, discussed this in their exploration of person-centeredness in practice. Um, they go on further to make a relationship between the importance of person, personhood, and the environment, particularly emphasising the complexity of being able to articulate and to action concepts connected to person-centeredness in practice. They position person-centred care as a whole series of moments built up over time that ultimately require commitment from people in organisations to the sustained facilitation of developments in teams and across organisation. And here I am emphasising and stressing the importance of time. If we look at the four existentials and think about the couple of examples that I've shared there, person-centredness is therefore more than relationship-centred care advocated by some of the other academics. And some other people, for example, Stoddart, discuss the idea of a co-humanity. Co and um, Todry again raises the notion of a co-embodiment, which I think are really helpful. I actually think that um, Kitwood did us a disservice by emphasising personhood primarily as a social relationship rather than looking at the, the other existentials, although it has to be said he wasn't working within a phenomenological framework and certainly, as far as I'm aware, hasn't drawn on the work of Merleau-Ponty. So for me, understanding person and person-centeredness rests on and should build on the four existentials and very clearly includes the notion of embodiment and challenges the Cartesian dualistic perspective. Recently, of course, I've been wondering whether the nature of person and personhood may need to change because of globalisation and technology. But I'm comforted and grounded by the view that um, De Sculter suggests that there is embodied and embedded common threads which connect us all. 
I do believe, however, that these threads need more, more of an equal balance across the four existentials as described by Merleau Ponty, and also that there needs to be a stronger and more united voice from across nursing. So, in conclusion to my paper, just I guess the key points that I would want to stress that is that that which makes us a person does not lie either in the brain or the mind or the soul, they exist. Instead, the person is the body in which different types of properties are inseparable and mutually constituted. Persons are body subjects and they are an absolute source of being. They are part of time and culture and not the product of it. Our experience of ourselves as body subjects is not objective, separate or dualistic. Our subjectivity is not separate from our embodiment or vice versa. Being in the world is not only a conscious intentionality, it is a bodily intentionality. Being situated in the world includes relationality, spatiality and temporality. And I think we have still lots to learn from those situated at the edge of these existentials or those out of their comfort areas such as many older people and those with impaired cognition. Thank you for listening to this paper and I hope that this will add to your discussions during today's events. Thank you.